Hello Seminole Ridge students, parents, and community members. This video will serve as an orientation for any students who are new to our campus and a good refresher for our returning students. We are excited to welcome nearly 2,200 students back to our on-campus learning. The hybrid model of last school year was a challenge for the vast majority of our students, and we know that a full return to campus will be beneficial to the educational needs of our students. Although COVID-19 presented us with many challenges last year, it reaffirmed the value of having students and teachers together in the classroom. We know that positive student-teacher relationships are powerful components to effective education, and the hybrid model greatly impeded the formation of those relationships. Our entire staff is looking forward to working with students in a familiar setting. While COVID vaccines have made a return to campus safer, we all need to be prepared for setbacks. The rate of infections is on the rise, especially among the unvaccinated, so everyone should anticipate that we will experience some cases on campus this year. For that reason, the district has announced that the wearing of face masks will be optional this year. Each family can decide if their students will wear masks. Now let's get to some important information for making this a successful year for everyone. I'm Dr. James Campbell, Principal of Seminole Ridge. This will be my 13th year at Seminole Ridge, and my 11th as the principal. I want to introduce several members of our staff so you know who to turn to should you need to this year. We have four assistant principals. They are assigned to work with students based on the student's last name. Ms. Elizabeth Boutte works with students E through K. Ms. Sharina Gilbert Henry works with students R through Z. So Joseph Leyland works with students A through D. And Dr. Deidre Reed Thomas works with students L through Q. Several other people, starting with our counseling, school counseling department, we have Dr. Melissa Garcia working with students A through CO, Samantha Mancuso working with students HE through MC, Marissa Passatempo working with students CR through HA, Dr. Ashley Rizzi working with students S through Z and Brian Welch, working with students M-E through R. We also have Mrs. Sandy West, she's our department counselor, and she works with all the ninth grade students. We have a couple of other resources on campus that will work with our students. Uh, our behavioral health professional is Ms. Joanne Galati. Our student dean is Mr. Scott Barnwell. Our ACE and AVID coordinator is Christine Grosso for any of your questions regarding our ACE program and the AVID program. Ms. Tamara Licavoli handles our academies and is our activities coordinator. Uh, our Student Government Association sponsor is Mrs. Long, and she's responsible for working with our SGA as they plan numerous student events throughout the school year. Our athletic director, for any of our students who are interested in uh, being a part of any of our athletic programs, is Mr. Scott Parks. And our current uh, school police officer who's assigned to us is Mr. Brian Pizzuti. Also need to introduce our class sponsors in case we have students who are looking to be involved with their class and the activities throughout the year. For the senior class of 2022, it's Janine Brainer and Roberto Gomez. For our junior class of 2023, Haley Turner and Melissa Rose Koslick. Our sophomore class of 2024, Judy Dennis and Wajid Rosario. And for our incoming freshman class of 2025, it's Margaret and Michael Holtrip. We know you are, are wondering when you're going to come onto campus and you know other than this information that we're giving you here we do have opportunity for you to come onto campus to pick up your IDs if need be, uh, retrieve a school computer if you if you don't have yours from last year if you're new to uh, the Palm Beach County and students who need a parking decal and if you just want to get a campus tour you want to walk around and see where your classes are by checking out your schedule and making sure you know where to go. We have the dates here on the screen, August the 2nd from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Our 12th graders can come in. That's when they'll take care of parking and all other needs. Our 10th grade class comes on the 2nd from 2 to 4 p.m. And then on August the 3rd, our 11th graders will be coming in from 9 to 11 a.m. And our 9th graders from 2 to 4. And again, that's only if you need to get an ID, a computer, a parking decal, or want the campus tour. Um, there won't be any formal presentations that day. That's what this video is for at this point. We want to get you ready and get to let you know all the information that you need to take care of before school starts. So obviously we need to know how you're going to get here. If you're planning to have your student ride the bus, the school district requires that all bus riders register for their bus, even if you rode the bus last year. 
still need to get in and register. The way you do this is the same way you did it last year. And again, if you're new to the district, you follow this process, you log into the student portal and then you click on the register your ride and that picture below is what the icon looks like. And that once you, once you do that, it will let you know where your stop is and the pickup times. All the information about your routes will be given to you after you do that bus registration. I want to give a little information for our bus riders because we know, you know, they, it's one thing to find your bus to get here at the beginning of the day, but when the end of the day is, is over and you're heading to the buses, we need to uh, let everyone know where to go. So we, all students will go back to the bus loop that they came in in the morning. It's out through our white gates on the north end of the campus. Uh, when you exit the white gates towards the bus loop, there's a whiteboard on the wall that lists where your bus is located. You need to look at that whiteboard, find your bus, and proceed to boarding immediately. Buses leave every day at 2.55, so don't be late. If you have any questions while in the bus loop, please ask any of the administrators or teachers who are out there to help you. Please remember that students are only permitted to ride the bus that goes to your registered bus stop. You can't hop on some other bus because you're going home with a friend or something along those lines. The bus drivers should only be letting you on to the buses that you're registered for. If you have any questions regarding bus transportation, you can always reach out to Mr. Leyland. He's our, our transportation coordinator. We just gave a couple of pictures so students who are new to the campus can see what's going on. The bottom right there is it's coming out of the white gates towards our bus loop. When you come out, you're going to want to look to that wall to your right. And the larger picture there shows our board on the wall out there near the bus loop. And then the top right hand picture shows how we designate where the buses are. So each day those buses will be in different locations depending on what time they arrive. So make sure that you always come out, check that board, find out which spot your bus is in, and then head to your bus. If you're not a bus rider but your parents or someone else is dropping you off, if you're a car rider, we have a map here that shows coming in from Seminole Pratt Whitney Road all Car riders come in through the same main entrance at the center where the stoplight is and directly across from the 7-Eleven that is currently going up. All car riders have to come through that. Drivers go through a different entrance. Our student drivers go through a different entrance. You see that on the far left side of that map. All student parking, they go through the entrance nearest the stadium. Um, if you're a car rider, as you come in, you'll see the cones and... Um, Barricades will direct you around the loop and realistically as soon as you get to a section where there is a sidewalk You can start dropping off your students so they can get out a little bit sooner You don't have to wait till you get to the front um, And but once you get to the front near the school it is a covered walkway for those days when it's bad weather outside And now our student drivers students who park on campus need to purchase a parking permit Students must apply for the permit online you do that at SeminoleRidge.org. look for the students and parents link then the next screen will pop up and on the left hand side you should look for students and then click that link and then the following link will be student parking. That'll take you to our student parking page that has all of the information that you need to sign up for parking, has the link to the online application as well as uh, letting you know what documentation needs to be submitted for your parking permit. Once you complete the application, wait for an email that will show the approval that your parking application has been approved and let you know that you're cleared to come and pick it up. If you do this all soon, uh, seniors can come pick up their permits starting on, on August the 2nd from 9 to 11 a.m. Juniors will be August 3rd from 9 to 11 a.m. And sophomores can do it the afternoon that they're scheduled on August the 2nd from 2 to 4 p.m. Obviously, and if you do not get a permit by that point in time, you need a few weeks or you don't become a driver until later on in the year, We'll just stop by student services anytime during the year to do the application and pick up the permit. I want to share those things that you need to do. Just one more reminder of everything that needs to happen before the first day of school. If you're going to register for the, if you're going to ride the bus, we need you to register for the bus. If you're a student driver, you need to purchase that parking decal. You need to find your ID from previous years or come to school on August 2nd and 3rd at your appointed time to get a new ID. A uh, question always comes up about school supplies. Every teacher will let their students know what supplies they need for their specific class because each, each teacher has their own specific needs. Uh, for, but just to be safe on the first day, make sure you bring paper, something to write with, and your Chromebook or laptop that's been issued to you. Uh, you also want to look up your class schedule on SIS. 
and a good good tip for you until you get it learned is to make sure that you uh, post it as your phone wallpaper that way you can easily see it and you're trying to figure out your way around campus and where your next class is and then we know uh, it's time for back to school shopping so you need to draw, know the dress code before you do your back to school shopping our dress code 2022 at Seminole Ridge our attention is devoted to learning school safety encouraging good behavior and preparing students for their futures School serves as a workplace for our students, and our dress code prepares students for the workplace and beyond. For acceptable tops, students' dress must be modest, so cleavage and midriffs must be covered and no visible underwear. You are not permitted to wear tank tops or sleeveless shirts. Tops must not be see-through see or sheer, and there should not be any holes or rips that expose skin. For the bottoms, bottoms must not be sheer or see-through. Skirts, shorts, and dresses must be no shorter than four inches above the knee. Pants, shorts, and skirts must be worn at the waist. Leggings, tights, or yoga pants are not permitted. And you should not have any holes in your pants above the knee. Below the knee is fine, just nothing up above your knee. A few additional guidelines to go along with the dress code. Students all of our students wear their ID and lanyard on their necks at all times. That way we can always be sure that you're a Seminole Ridge student. Uh, no pajamas or slippers on campus. Do not wear any hats, hood, hoodies, or head coverings or bandanas, except for religious exemptions. Uh, we need to be able to recognize you and see you easily and identify students on campus. So that's the purpose of no hats or hoodies or head coverings. Uh, no portable speakers. We don't. You can listen to your music, but we don't need to listen to your music. And you can listen to your music specific times, and that's outside of class time. And when you do so, make sure you only are using one ear, so one earbud in at a time so you can hear what's going on around you, and only outside of class time. So lunchtime, before school, after school, but during class time, you should not be listening to your earbuds or using your phones. The district policy on school um, dress code is specifically the following attire is unacceptable in district schools. That's any attire with languages or images that are crude, vulgar, profane, lewd, obscene, sexually explicit, or sexually suggestive. Uh, any attire that has symbols, mottos, words, or acronyms that promote illegal or violent conduct, such as gang symbols, the unlawful use of weapons, drugs, alcohol, tobacco, or drug paraphernalia, or clothing that contains threats. And attire associated with discrimination basis on the basis of age, color, handicap, national origin, sexual orientation, marital status, race, religion, or sex. All of those are prohibited items in the School District of Palm Beach County. Now that you have all the information ready to start the first day, there's one more thing that you have to get ready for. Make sure that earning your diploma is your goal from the very first day of school, whether it's your first day of ninth grade or your first day of 12th grade. This has to be your priority every day that you're on campus so that you make sure you earn that diploma and are ready for your next step in life. So now the big day, August 10th, 2021. Our gates and the front gates and from the bus loop will open at 7 o'clock and students are released from buses at 7 a.m. Breakfast is available in the cafeteria from 7 a.m. to 724. At 724 the bell rings to send students to their first period class. Everybody heads to their first period starting at 724. First period begins at 7.30 every day. Students who are not in class by 7.30 are considered tardy, and then we have discipline consequences that will be issued starting with third tardy. August 10th is a different day from every other day in the school year, and that it's going to be a seven-period day so that students meet all of their teachers on the first day of school. So you will go through all seven classes that first day of school. Here's a schedule for that first day, August the 10th. And again, it's the only day we'll be on this particular bell schedule, but we want to share it with you here. You will be in each class for a total of 50 minutes, and then you have your change over time in between classes. That day, lunch will be during fifth period. After fourth, at the end of the fourth period bell at 11.05, everyone will head to their fifth period class first. So whatever classroom it says on your schedule for fifth period, you go to that classroom first, then we'll give an explanation over the intercom about which uh, buildings go to lunch, lunch A and which buildings go to lunch B. 
We will release over the intercom students who are in lunch A to go to lunch. You have your lunch time there, and then after your lunch ends, you will return to fifth your fifth period class and have your fifth period class during that time. If you're a lunch B group, you'll be in fifth period first. You'll have your class time, and then after the class is over with, the bell will ring and send you to lunch. And then after lunch B, everybody will be heading to sixth period and then seventh period. I know this picture on the left is a little hard to see. We just wanted to show you what it's going to look like, but it will be available on our school website. Seminole Ridge is on a block schedule, an alternating block schedule, which means that on day one, you go to classes first, third, fifth, and seventh. And then on day two, you see periods two, four, five, and six. So you have that alternating block schedule. You will go onto, the, uh, onto our website to be able to see this alternating block schedule, and it shows you either a one or two on every day throughout the year. Here's what our, school, our regular school bell schedule looks like. So this is from August 11th on. In our blocked classes, which are every period except fifth period, you're in the class for basically 100 minutes. So it's literally two class days in one period, and you see those classes every other day. Uh, so again, you'll do one, three, five, seven. The next day is two, four, five, and six. And there's a schedule. We also have uh, short days on semester exam days. Those last three days of each term of each semester, and the semester exams exam schedule is there for you as well. We did tell you you need to register for the bus, but also uh, we need you to register for lunch if you uh, are able to apply for, or if you're eligible for free and reduced lunch. You can just scan this QR code easily on your screen and it'll pull up the application to apply for free and reduced lunch. But the big question always is, you know, which, when's lunch? When do I get to go to lunch? How do I know which lunch to go to? Well, lunch is always fifth period every day. It's determined by which building your class is in during fifth period. So if you have lunch A, it means that you have class in buildings two, three, four, five, and the villas during your fifth period class. So you go to lunch A. Buildings six, seven, eight, and nine go to lunch B. So they have class, they have fifth period class first and then go to lunch. But everyone reports to their fifth period at the beginning anyways because that's when we do our school news and then you get released to lunch. So as soon as your classes, your previous class though, with everyone go either third period or fourth period, you report directly to fifth period. Then you get sent to whichever lunch you're, you're eligible for. Don't forget to log in to SIS prior to August 10th so you can see your class schedule. Uh, if you have any issues with your schedule, we'll explain how to deal with those at this point. Schedule changes are granted for very rare reasons, either for an academic misplacement, such as you haven't taken the prerequisite course. You know, if you're put in Algebra 2 and you've never taken Algebra 1, then obviously we need to make a change there. Or if a student has previously passed a course, for some reason maybe you've already taken a course and you were put into it again, that will make an easy change for you and get it fixed very quickly. If you receive your schedule and you see any issues with it or not, are you missing a class, you don't have the full seven classes or whatever, we'll explain on the first day of school how to deal with that. Um, schedule changes, however, are not granted for preferences, basically. If you, uh, I want a different teacher or I want a different lunch time or I need to be uh, at lunch with my classmate or my best friend or my girlfriend, boyfriend, that's not a reason for a class change. It need to be academic reasons. And we also do not do schedule changes for electives. Electives, you get to rank which choices you would like the most, but it's, it's a preference. You don't, you're not guaranteed an elective. We fit you into the electives as much as the uh, class sizes will allow for. Schedule change requests are considered within the first two weeks of each semester. So make sure if you have one of those issues that was mentioned earlier, you get it to us as soon as you possibly can. Students will need to speak with a counselor before, after school, or during lunch during the first two weeks of school. Uh, school counseling office is just next to the cafeteria, so during lunchtime, school counselors will be available at the, at, at the counseling office to meet with students to discuss some of those scheduling issues. But understand that we do not change um, schedules very often, mainly because of class size issues. If you have a question you need to talk to your counselor, if it's a scheduling question or any other question, maybe you need to sign up for dual enrollment or any kinds of other questions that you have from your school counselor or you need to talk to them anytime during the school year, the easiest way is through email. Uh, we found a lot, you know, obviously there was a lot of communication via email last year during the 
during the uh, pandemic and the hybrid learning. So many of you are comfortable emailing your, your teachers and counselors, the same thing. It's easiest to get in touch with your counselors through email. Uh, you can make an appointment. Students, if you stop by the school counseling office before or after school during lunch, Mrs. Bennett there can set up an appointment for you. Parents, you can also contact your your school your child's counselor directly through email or by calling Ms. Robin Bennett. Her number is 561-422-2610 or email her and she'll be very responsive to you. All right, we need to get you, we talked about graduation. Well, in order to be graduation ready, we need you to know what you need to uh, accomplish during your four years here. In order to graduate, you have a requirement, state requirement of 24 credits. That would be four English, four math, three science, three social studies, one fine arts, one physical education, and eight electives. And one of your courses must be an online course. All of those will equal up to your 24 credits. Because you're here for four years, you have the ability to take up to 28 credits. So you have some, some flexibility in there. And that's why if you do things well, then you get a little bit more flexibility in your senior year schedule. You also have certain testing requirements that are state mandated. You must pass the Algebra 1 EOC or earn a concordant score on the PSAT, the SAT, or the ACT. And you must pass the Grade 10 ELA FSA, which is basically the reading and writing test, or earn a concordant score on the SAT or ACT. You also need a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA and a minimum of 20 community service hours. Transitioning from graduation, if you're concerned with graduation, you're concerned with your grades and frequently the most common question, one of the most common questions is how can I earn some extra credit? That's part of the reason we have the Book It program. Reading is an integral part of everyone's daily life. As a reading community, Seminole Ridge is dedicated to developing lifelong learners with a love of reading. We believe in providing time and incentives for students to read material of their choosing to promote reading for learning and enjoyment. A little explanation of the Book It program and how you can earn your points. Um, books that are in the Media Center have a Book It label on them, and our, our media specialist, Mrs. Weber, can help you out with that. You pick a book, any book that you choose. Each book is, is worth a certain number of points through our Scholastic Reading Counts quizzes. If you earn 20 Reading Counts points, you get one Book It ticket. And that Book It ticket is worth three points extra credit added to the final grade in a quarter in any class that the student chooses. So, for example, if you're in English 1 and you have a 77C, and then you choose to use your book it ticket in that class, the teacher will take the ticket from you and then change your grade at the end of the term, and then that would give you an 80% for a B. So there's a way for you to earn extra credit just by reading and taking quizzes throughout the year. That's how you can earn extra credit and help yourself out throughout the process. The tickets can only be used if all assignments and makeup work are turned in by Friday of the week prior to the end of the quarter. So you have to do all your work in order to be eligible for this extra credit, but maybe you've done all your work and you've just struggled on a couple of tests and you're a point or two away from that next grade, well, you can turn in a book of ticket to make sure you get uh, your extra credit. Students can earn multiple tickets. Uh, you can earn a maximum of 60 points, which equals three tickets, but can only use one ticket per class per quarter. So you can get three points in any of, the, any of your classes, but you can't use multiple tickets in one class. If you need six points to get up to that next grade, that's not going to work for you in that particular class. Obviously, worrying about your grades is a big piece towards being successful in earning that diploma. I'm also a firm believer that involved students are more successful students. Um, being involved with your classmates in activities outside of the classroom are a huge boost for you, keep you involved in school and really focused. We have numerous clubs and activities available here at Seminole Ridge to keep you involved and, and be involved in extracurricular activities. We have approximately 30 clubs that are available, a wide range of interest levels, ASL, Future Educators of America, First Priority, The Best Buddies, Key Club, Honor Societies in just about every subject area, a uh, Spanish club, the SECME, numerous clubs you just need to uh, designate what your interest is and there's probably a club available for it. We also field over 40 sports teams at the varsity, junior varsity, and freshman levels. We encourage many of you to be involved in our athletics. Another way that you can be involved in school is through the Student Government Association. Especially for freshmen, we have positions open every year. 
So if you're interested in being involved in student government, which really plans all of the great student activities throughout the year, homecoming, uh, Spirit Week, all of those kinds of events are involved with the Student Government Association. I also meet with SGA once a month to kind of get the pulse of what's going on on campus. And SGA representatives are basically representing all the students in their grade level. So I, I take a lot of stock in what the students say in SGA. And we really encourage you to be part of that. If you're interested, once school starts, stop by 6101 to find out more information on how to run for office. Another program that we like to have students join in and we want to make sure you are aware of is called the AVID program. AVID is a college readiness program that teaches students how to take charge of their learning in order to help prepare them for college and beyond. AVID practices skills like note taking, organization, inquiry, like asking high level questions, and cooperative learning. Many students who may be on the fence of whether or not they plan on going to college or may feel they're not quite prepared might want to consider AVID because it's a great class. It does use up one of your elective classes on your schedule and it's a class you'll go to and uh, participate throughout. And we'll try to make sure that you're, you are understanding how to become a better student and focused on advancing to college. If you're interested in the AVID program, contact Mrs. Grosso. She's our AVID coordinator. You have her phone number there on the screen as well as her email. Obviously, we want our students to be successful, and it's, it's an academic piece, but it's also a behavioral piece. So we encourage our students to follow these universal guidelines so that they'll soar to success. We want our students to always think of the acronym HAWKS SOAR. We want them to always act in a way that brings honor to themselves, their family, and to their school. We want them focused on their own achievement. We hope that they gain wisdom throughout the years. We want them to be focused on acquiring knowledge in every class, and we believe through that they'll be successful. Uh, another way to do, do those, accomplish those feats is we want to make sure you're always focused on being safe, that you need to be organized, you're achieving, and that you're respectful. And through all of those, we believe you will soar into your future. We also will need to uh, let you know about the Fortify Florida program. Fortify Florida is a suspicious activity reporting tool that allows you to instantly relay information to the appropriate law enforcement agencies and school officials. This was a requirement as a result of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act. All the schools in Florida have Fortify Florida installed on their school computers, and we also encourage you to install it on your devices, your cell phones. Reporting threats. Any individual can anonymously make a report, whether it's from their phone or their computer, because this platform is statewide and it's an anonymous reporting portal that uh, allows students and parents to report potential threats or dangerous activities on a school campus, such as if you're aware of weapons being on campus, if you heard of threats of potential shootings, or if you heard of bomb threats. And the way you would report that is by using the icon either on your school district computer or iPad, laptop, or Chromebook, or you can download the app that's available on your phone. To make a report, locate the Fortify Florida icon that you see here to your on the left-hand side of the screen, and the icon, again, is going to be available on all school computers. This program was developed so that students can see something and say something and report it to someone and have the ability to potentially uh, head off a, a severe threat that's going to may occur to the campus or if rumored to occur to the campus. But we also, the state understood that there could be some potential misuse, so they've put some measures in place to make sure that we do not receive false reports and that we're not wasting time uh, investigating or putting people in at risk when they don't need to be. The reporting is anonymous. Law enforcement does have the ability to track and identify the origin of false reporting. Any student who willfully and knowingly makes a false report or provides false information in a report will be subject to disciplinary action, which includes, but is not limited to, an expulsion. This comes directly from Florida State statute. Any student who is determined to have made a false threat or report involving school or school's personal property, school transportation, or a school-sponsored activity will be expelled with or without continuing education services from the schools from the students regular school for a period of not less than one full year and referred for criminal prosecution for instances involving falsified reports including involving bombs explosives or any incendiary device fall under bomb threat in the student code of conduct and is also an expellable offense additionally any student who is 
proven to have submitted a false report will be required to attend mandatory health services after they're referred to a, an agency. So please make sure that you do not do anything to misuse this particular system. It is here for your safety and not for any kind of misuse. Please remember that this program, Fortify Florida, has been created for ultimately to keep all of us safe. We hope that if you have a concern, as we've brought up earlier, for some of those different reasons, you'll come to administration and let us know about it. If you're not comfortable, though, please make sure you use Fortify Florida to do so and provide us as much information as possible because the whole goal is to stop incidents before they occur. The Fortify Florida app was developed to deal with major threats such as weapons and other major disruptions of the campus. The school district has also developed a hotline to deal with, other, uh, with bullying issues that need to be reported. If you want to report an issue, you deal directly, the report that goes directly to the school district office at the number below, 561-434-8200, and then a report is sent to the school to investigate. While we're on the subject of student behavior, we want to just make a mention that we know that the majority of, of issues that happen now begin on social media. And we just want to remind students that no matter what you think, if you put it online, it's always going to exist online. Somebody's going to be able to take a screenshot, post it somewhere else. If you post it online, it never goes away. So this, this poster kind of sums that up in saying that your digital online presence is not a footprint. It's a tattoo. So make sure it's a positive one. Parents, what can you do? Well, make sure you keep an, on, an eye on your child's online socializing. You want to encourage them to be empathetic with others and understanding of others. You want to teach them about their digital footprint and that it is permanent. Make sure that they keep their passwords private. You want to encourage them to communicate with a friend or a trusted adult. You want to establish consequences if your student is involved in a bullying behavior. And you want to be prepared to deal with cyberbullying. Unfortunately, it's, it is just a part of our world that we live in right now. And, and the more we're prepared with it and, and talk with our students, the better the outcome can be for everyone. Discussing social media obviously leads into cell phones, so just want to let everyone know cell phones may be used on campus except during scheduled class time. Using a cell phone during that time can result in confiscation, and refusal to allow your cell phone to be confiscated will result in immediate removal from the class and additional disciplinary consequences. It's very simple. During class time, just put your phones away. Don't bother with them. When you have lunch, you have before school, after school, or in between classes, you're able to use your phones. But don't bother with them in class unless your teacher asks you to take them out to do an activity or an assignment with it. Another issue, the major issue that we have with in regards to student discipline is the dangers of vaping. And we want to make sure that everybody is well aware of the issues that, that we have. Um, flavored e-liquids containing may contain different levels of nicotine. One of the more popular vape devices, the Juul, contains 59 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine in each pod, or as much as an entire pack of cigarettes. Uh, by vaping, you're also risking exposure to toxins, dependence, smoking risks, injuries, poisoning, cancer, and respiratory effects. Uh, the vape liquids that contain THC have been shown to be five to six times as strong as the THC levels in marijuana flowers. And emergency room visits from using THC liquids have reported hypothermia, tachycardia, hypertension, severe agitation, and neuro and cardiotoxicity. And we say this because, unfortunately, too many times we have had to call the paramedics for a student who is in distress after using a vape device. Please make sure you're not using these. They're bad for your health. They're very dangerous for you. You do not know the effects of them, and it's not something that you need to be dealing with at school. It's illegal for you at your age to have them, and unfortunately, we've seen too many medical issues as a result of using them. So please make sure that you work with your students and they understand the, the dangers of vaping. In addition to those dangers medically, we have school-related consequences and possible legal consequences. If you're caught with a vape, you're going to be suspended which means you're going to lose class time. If it's a THC vape, you're going to be required to attend a drug class to reduce some of your suspension, and you're going to be referred to the school-based team so that we'll be monitoring you for as, a, as you return to campus. Obviously, if it's, if it's a drug, there's a possible felony charge involved, which could be a possible court date and a, something on your record, and then that's money and time for both you and your parents. 
Now to turn it on a little bit more positive note, where you know a lot of times students want to uh, buy some hot gear or maybe you need a locker, you can do this at our Hawk Shop. It's located in room 6101 and it's open from 7 to 724 every morning to do all of that. They sell Seminole Ridge Spirit Apparel and other items and they also are a place to rent lockers. If you choose to rent the locker, you want to find that locker number and then look for the serial number on the back of the lock and then take that to 6101 so you can, they can give you the information on the combination and you can pay for it. Parents, did you know that when a student gets hurt that the parent or guardian is responsible for the expense? The school district offers accidental insurance coverage through the School Insurance of Florida. There are two different plans available. One is the school time plan that covers them for any hours that the students are in school, and that's only $10 for the entire school year. Or they also offer a 24-hour plan that covers them both on campus and off campus, and that's available for $45 a year. Most of them are you know, very, very affordable plans that will cover you in the event of any kind of issues that arise. If you're interested in this, please go to the school district website and look for the student and parent section. Click on there, and it'll be student accident insurance. We also want to share with you information about our School Advisory Council. The School Advisory Council is a school-based group intended to represent the school, the community, and those persons closest to the students. It is comprised of the principal and an appropriate balanced number of stakeholders. It must be representative of the ethnic, racial, and economic makeup of the community served by the school. It can include parents, teachers, students, administrators, support staff, business and industry people, and community members. If you're interested in being part of our SAC, our first meeting will be Monday, August the 16th at 6 p.m. in our media center. I hope I've provided you a great deal of information to get you ready for the first day of school. We invite you to connect with us through various means, whether our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Snapchat. Um, we will frequently provide information through these various social media platforms. We look forward to welcoming everybody back on August the 10th, and we'll see you on August the 2nd or 3rd if you need to pick up your computer, get a new ID, or get a parking decal. Until then, enjoy the rest of your summer, and we'll see you here at 7.30 a.m. on August the 10th.